So I don't give a fuck. You guys are the love of my life. And on that note, let's fire it up. All right. Here we go. Okay, are we live? It says we're live. All right, video feeds coming across on the YouTube side. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a very controversial <laughs> episode of Caliber Corner. Uh, this is podcast number 180, season three. And today we're going to talk about the perfect concealed carry firearm. Does it exist? What is it? What's out there? Is it more of an idea or concept or is it a literal firearm that you love to conceal carry that you think everybody else should conceal carry too? And uh, before we get into that discussion, just a quick reminder that today's episode is sponsored by SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska. Guys, make sure you take the Interstate 80 exit to SS Pond right off into Lexington, Nebraska, the middle part of Nebraska. You can't miss it. Stop in there. Say hello to Stan. Check out the firearms. Go buy something. And SS Pond will take care of your firearms needs. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and let the panel introduce themselves today. Uh, why don't we start up in my top left over here? A wag, a wag. What's going on? Yo, what's up? First Thanks one here this the morning. Invite. Appreciate. It. Hey, no problem, man. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so you might be interested in a concealed carry firearm at some point, huh? Yeah, I mean, actually, when it comes to concealed carry firearms, I already have mine picked out and I already oh. have it. And All I right, have tons of experience on it. Okay, okay. I'm a and, pretty uh, tall, lanky fellow, so. I when we get into that discussion, carry. are you going to be willing to uh, share that with us? Maybe make some recommendations on what works for sure. you? Sweet. sweet. Sure. And again, these are just recommendations. You know, the, the best thing you can do is go to the range and, and check out a bunch of different models and have fun with them and see what happens. So uh, what else is new in your life, man? You got any content coming up on the channel? Um, well, I just posted a magazine review of the, uh, what is it? The C products, Duramag. Yeah. Speed. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, it, it, I just kind of wrote down some notes on it and then. During the video, I just kind of like read through the notes, and mm -hmm. it, it's a good magazine. It holds ammo, it does its job. Yeah, I've got a couple of them in the seven sixty two by thirty nine. I've bought, bought and purchased probably a total of eight so far, and out of the eight, I've only had one that gave me issues. It just took a little bit of filing to get it to to pick up the first round, and actually, it kept catching on the bolt carrier group. So it just took a little bit of filing. Two seconds later, it was good to go. So they're not perfect, but they are pretty dang good for what they for what they offer. You know. Um, yeah, those are good. Yeah, I did see that magazine review. That was pretty cool. Sweet, yeah. man. All right. Also joining us this morning, we got uh, Defense Dad. Defense Dad, what's going on, man? How's it going? Oh, morning. I got a, I got, this is the start of a four day weekend for me. I'm going to do some shooting and nice. just have some fun. Hey, the weather's going to be good at least until Monday, right? You're going to get out, get some fresh air, get some sunlight. Not have yep. to wear the damn mask, right? <laughs> I'm going to try to go the whole four days and not have to wear a mask the whole time. There you go. There you go. Sounds good, man. All right. And uh, what's new coming up on your channel? You got a lot of cool content. Everybody should head on over and subscribe to Defense Dad. He's got a good channel. Uh, I got a few things coming. I'm going to do a lot of filming this week, I think. Um, some gun reviews, some product reviews. Just get them out. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. I think as you see the weather improve, a lot of us are going to be out the range a lot more. Um, I'm not so worried so much about the ammo shortage myself. I just want to go out and shoot and have a good time. So uh, we'll be producing a lot more content, a lot more videos coming your way pretty soon. So make sure you check it out. Cool, man. Thanks for being here today. Yep. All right. And Calaveras, 32 specials in the house. Calaveras, what's new in your world, man? How are things going? Not a whole lot new here. Things are going pretty well. Just, uh, you know, keeping myself out of trouble. Heck yeah. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Thanks for being here. Appreciate having you here. Uh, you got any videos, any content coming up on your channel? I've got a few projects I'm working on. Uh, some more holster reviews. I have some, uh, you know, just a few other things here and there. Not a whole lot planned out real far, but you know, I've got a few things coming. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I actually, believe it or not, I've got a holster review coming up. It's been a long time since I've done one, so... Uh, we'll have to see what uh, see how things go. So, all right, man, appreciate having you here. I know you're out there on the West Coast, and it's pretty dang early right now, but I appreciate you being here as always. So thanks for stopping by. All right. And last but not least, we've got Squib. Squib load. Squib, do you have your coffee? That's the most important question of the day. Are you awake? You know, it's pretty dang early on the East Coast, too. <laughs> I'd like to uh, file a grievance with the union okay. over the fact that you don't have the show at a more sensible hour. When you signed the contract to be on the show, you said you would abide by the hours of programming, whether it's a Monday night or a Saturday morning or, you know, so I, I'm sorry, sir. I, I, you know, it's just, it's grievances. Uh, just, it's just not going to happen. So you'll um, be hearing from my union steward. I am the union steward. Okay. I am the king. 
And uh, uh, this is my castle. Uh, <laughs> crap. I'm just going to point out, you're on a show that's run by a caffeine fanatic who... Yeah. Uh, not to mention, it's, right? it's an hour later where you are. It's 9 o'clock. I'm already going full speed by 9 a.m., bro. So, you know? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the whole yeah, 6 a.m. on Saturday is a little hey. tougher. You can't take the heat, get out of the reloading room, right? That's what I say. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, Travis, you are uh, mm. you are energized <sighs> too much, too much. I'm gonna try to try to bring that energy to the audience, try to bring that energy to the world. You know. All right. Uh, so let's see who's joining us on the YouTube side. We've got a very lively conversation going on already. So again, what's the perfect carry weapon? Does that carry weapon exist? Is that concealed carry pistol actually out there for you, or are you just going to have to buy into something and just be happy with what you got? Those are the questions we're going to ask today. Uh, so joining in, we've got Mystic Guns, Calaveras 32 Special, Billy the Cab Driver, Tommy Gun, John Lowell, Gun Snob, Watt 75, Joe V, Defense Dad, MKJO, Justin Grimm, Jacob Eads, Tacos and French Fries. Ooh, M. Gabriel's out there, too, saying, hey. And let's see, Wild and Well Armed is out there, and so is William Trader, the first person to check in. So a couple comments popping up already. Uh, Justin Grimm says the perfect concealed carry is up to you. It only counts when you carry, so don't, so you don't, so don't just have to carry it, or just don't have it. Oh, just don't have it, carry it. All right, man, complicated sentences this morning. Uh, Gun Snob says, speaking of the perfect CCW gun, enter our hen subscriber giveaway for a chance to win a sweet custom Glock 26. There you go. Uh, YouTube tried to hide that comment. We brought that to life so everybody could see it. So there you go. All right. Okay. So here's here's the thing. I, I, the reason why I wanted to have this discussion is because I just recently bought a, a Sig P365 used. It was a great price. I just I really couldn't turn it, couldn't turn down the price on it. And looking back on it, thinking about it, I I don't know what my problem is. I'm I've been concealed carrying for basically eight years now. It'll be eight years this month since I got my carry permit, and. I am on like pistol number eight. I'm sitting here going through my mind of all the different handguns that I've carried. Some of them I have um, sent in for repair and then just decided not to keep them anymore. Like my Sky CPX2, which I carried for three years, by the way, and put over a thousand rounds through before it just basically fell apart. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, is the P365 going to be, you know, the best concealed carry gun for me? Is it? Is it not? I'm happy with what it does. Does it offer everything that I want? So is it possible to find perfection in your carry firearm? What is the best route to go when you choose your concealed carry firearm? My very first concealed carry firearm that I purchased was actually the Taurus PT-111 G2, which I had for about a year, did a lot of videos with it, sold it, and then ended up buying the FNS9C, the compact FN, the first series, which was super chunky. I sold that, and I moved on to the sky. So I just don't know what my problem is. I just can't seem to be happy. So I know first world problems here. What is it, guys? What is it that makes a perfect carry gun? Let's just throw it out there. What is it for you that makes the perfect carry gun? Is it the capacity, the design? Is it the the heritage of the brand? What is it? Help me out here. First off, there's no such thing as a perfect carry gun. Mm -hmm. um, I think I have to agree. Yeah. For me, a couple things. It depends time of year, what I'm wearing. Uh, ultimately, no matter what it is, uh, it's for me. It's got to be at least reasonably lightweight. Uh, I'm not going to carry a 1911. Um, I want to constantly be fighting it falling down. Um, I'm as everybody knows, I'm left-handed, so for me, it's got to be fully ambi, so I can use it with both hands if I need to. Uh, and it's got to be reliable mm. and decent in good sights to pick up. Um, past that, there's lots of guns out there that can fill that niche, and I still haven't found the perfect one. <laughs> Yeah, and a lot of it depends on your your body, your size. I mean, that really has a lot to do with what you may or may not be able to comfortably carry. I mean, some people can, you know, can can inside the waistband carry a G17, and they might be rail thin, and they're able to pull it off. You know, it really does kind of depend. For me, it's always been trying to get the smallest gun that I can with the highest capacity possible. Always trying to go for the thinnest firearm so that you know the tactical muffin top. It's easier for me to conceal. Whereas I'd love to consider, I'd love to carry something a little more full size, like my G 17, which I do carry as an outside the waistband carry in the wintertime when I got a heavy coat on, um, squib, what's your take on this man? Cause you had your carry permit for a while and you did carry a full size. What was your full size carry? What, what did you have? Oh, I carried an M nine. Okay. Okay. But I mean, if you're asking me my perfect, carry gun i mm -hmm. guess the 1911 yeah 
And I mean, I think a big part of it too is, you know, with the, the proper, you know, weight bearing belt or a good belt, a decent holster, uh, that can kind of take off some of that weight bearing. It does make it easier for a person to conceal carry. That was the big issue that it had with the, uh, the FNS nine C was, it was just so chunky. It was bigger than the PC one eleven G two. Um, I never had an issue carrying my M nine fully loaded with a regular leather mm-hmm. belt. I didn't well, have it, any special. Yeah. And I think a lot of it has to do with maybe your your waistline, your body type, also the way that your the belts wear. Because with me, if I have a lot of weight on one side, the belt will tend to sag on one side. Um, I think it kind of depends on the person too. So for some people, it works great, and for other people, it can be a little more a little more difficult. Um, Tacos and French fries has a good point. This is kind of like what Defense Dad just said. I live in Florida, so I also carry what is comfortable. You know, and again, your your climate is going to dictate a lot of of what you carry. Um, one of the things that I like about the P365 is that small form factor. I can just, you know, t-shirt and shorts and have it with an inside the waistband holster, uh, with the proper setup. I could possibly pocket carry it with a large pair of shorts, you know, cargo shorts and so on. Um, what else do we have here for me? Bob, yeah. For me, it's about what I shoot. Well, okay. I shoot a 1911. Well, Small guns. The only small gun I ever shot well was your PT-111. That's the only one. You did good. Well, and yeah, it, it's got and, almost like a full-size grip. I mean, it's not exactly and, a micro-compact. You know, it's and, got a pretty good-sized, beefy grip. And, and yeah. that's just it. The grip is probably the main reason why I go with a full-size. Although, you know, mm. I have shot uh, commander-sized 1911s, and I could do better with those. But, uh, no, I, I don't mind having that larger gun that makes it more of a challenge to conceal because when I use it, I want something that it's going to work. Mm-hmm. If, if I'm going to struggle with it, uh, you know, it might be small, it might be light, it might be comfortable and don't get me wrong. I, I don't, I'm not this, you know, uh, what is it? Ounces or pounds and pounds are pain. I, that is a load of crap. All the load bearing garbage I used to carry when I was younger and healthy. It's about how how healthy you are. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it, so sometimes weighing yourself self down with a whole bunch of stuff, it, it's possible to do. But it's also, do you really need to do that? That's yeah. a, that's a personal choice. Yeah. So uh, you know, I can understand somebody saying, "No, I want small. I want light. I want if if you can shoot it well." then I, I don't see the problem. But like for me, just small guns and me just do not mix. So I find a way to make that big gun work, I guess you could say. Yeah. That's the only reason why. Yeah. Yeah. No, man, I don't, I don't disagree with you. For me, it's always been about, you know, getting a good, getting a good purchase on that farm. If the gun is too small, if it's too tiny, if I needed to use it or manipulate, I mean, can I even get both my hands on it to fire it as good as I want to? And that's, that's a good point. You know, it's, maybe the perfect gun is the gun that you can shoot best that you're, that you're comfortable concealing. Um, Billy the cab driver says, personally, I like a 40, 45, or if I'm in a remote revolver mood with a 357 mag or bulldog 44. Uh, let's see. Net flutter says the P365 checks off a lot of boxes, easy to shoot, good capacity, 12 plus, reliable, very easy to conceal in size and weight, and good caliber. So if you do pick up a P365, this is crazy. What I've learned about this pistol, and I have it sitting right next to me here. Mine was made in February of 2020. So I've got one of the later model runs. Remember, it's been out since like 2017. It's not a new gun. And there's a really good form out there of, of SIG owners that are putting their serial numbers out there, which is crazy, with the with the data manufacturer from the box. So using that, you can basically narrow down. If you buy one used or even new for that matter, you can basically narrow down and find out when yours was made. Because there's been a series of changes they've made to that pistol as time has gone on. So if you get a P365, you may want to call it in and make sure it's had all the updates to it. There were some trigger springs that have been swapped out for more reliable springs. Uh, strikers have been replaced with more durable strikers because it does have some striker drag because of the micro size. It can't eject the round fast enough and get the striker to pull back and chamber the next round without having some primer uh, drag on the striker or striker drag on the primer. And so I know that that's, uh, that's an issue for a lot of people where they don't even want to chance it. They don't want to take a chance with it. Um, I've only done 60 rounds through mine right now. And it's mainly because of just time constraints. And then I just made a quick video, you know, using the Hornady custom that I shot through it and it was fine. There's a little tiny bit of, of, of striker drag on it, but with the, the new, the new revisions to it, basically they're on like a gen three by this point. Uh, if you send it into SIG, they'll, they'll do those upgrades for you. And I don't believe there's any cost. I think they're doing it as a voluntary recall 
Uh, but I know like the first gen P365s, I remember Mac tried his on Military Arms Channel and broke a trigger spring and then broke the primer. So I just think SIG, maybe, I don't know if they just didn't do enough testing in it, or maybe they had some part supplier issues or whatever. But if you get a P365, there's a lot of information out there for you. And again, I'm not just trying to push that gun. I'm just saying what I've learned in the last 14 days as being a, a owner of a used P365. They're nice because they come with night sights. They've got the nice little green circle front sight, which is really easy to pick up. Um, I shoot it pretty good. You got to remember, this isn't, you know, sure, Jerry Mitchell, I could probably shoot an apple with it at 100 yards, but you're more of like a 15, 20 yard, 25 yard max, uh, you know, personal defense pistol if you want to keep the uh, the bullets on the silhouette. So keep that in mind, too. Uh, let's see, Tailgate Tiger says, I'm six foot one, 265 pounds. Depending on the situation, I carry either Smith & Wesson 340 PD 357 mag or Smith & Wesson 1911 PD and 45 ACP. Gotta love Scandia. Yeah, that makes for a much lighter frame, doesn't it? Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Hopefully I didn't miss any comments so far. So again, those of you watching, just go ahead and chime in and let me know, you know, what's what's your preference for carry? What do you do? Um, Bob Adel says, I wear dress slacks to work and only pocket carry the little 380s. That's the other thing too. Um, depending on your outfit, what you have to wear to work, uh, that can really have a huge influence over what you can carry or what you can conceal uh, from your colleagues or those people that, that work around you. Uh, let's see here. Billy the cab driver says, what makes the perfect carry gun? One that's durable, reliable, and enough power to neutralize the threat with one round. So that's the other thing, too. Do you guys think that there should be a caliber minimum in a carry gun? Should it be 9 millimeters? Should you not go 380 or 22 LR or 25 well, or 32 ACP? What are your thoughts on this one? Here's, here's my thoughts about that is um, ultimately, if you have to pull a gun, um, yeah, I don't know what the statistics are. Somebody chime in with the statistics. But most of the time, people pull a gun, they don't necessarily fire it. So it's the attacker is coming towards you, you pull a gun, they see gun, and their brain goes into flight mode. Or if they do go into flight mode, you do pull that trigger. I don't know what the statistics is between, you know, people actually drawing the gun and actually firing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in, a, in a defense scenario. So, but at the same time, if you do have to put rounds down range, um, you know, you're essentially shooting to stop the threat 380 mm -hmm. with modern powder and bullets can do the job um you know it, you it's can one get of it you can get a, a potent self-defense 380 grade oh, round it's not like you got oh, a full ammo you know we're not in the 1950s right yeah and at the same time i have you know <laughs> one of these guns that are in my little inventory is the uh the caltech pmr 30 that's 22 magnum so you know, that's 30 rounds of 22 Magnum. If the person's not going down, you know, blah, 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 blah. Continue. Yeah, they're superhuman or on something or able to, or they're wearing body armor. <laughs> yeah. But that, I would, I would carry that little 22 Magnum because with modern uh, primers and powders, most of the time it'll go bang every single time you want it to. Yeah. Uh, Calaveras, you wanted to say something? What's up, man? Yeah, that's for, for me. It's, you know, uh, I know kind of it's contrary to something AY just said, but that's for I suggest anything but rimfire, just because historically rimfire has a lot lower reliability to uh, compared to center fire cartridges. And if you have to pull, generally speaking, you're not pulling it at 15 yards, you're pulling it at seven, you know what? Uh, and you need to go bang the first time, not have a you know, not have a misfire because of you know a messed up primer. Yeah. So that's right. I say stick with a center fire cartridge. I don't care if it's a 380, 25 ACP, 500 Smith and Wesson, whatever the heck you're comfortable with, just center fire. You know, the, it's funny you say that, and and I don't disagree with you. Um, but I'll, I we got we got that, a couple though. TX we got a couple TX 22s, and they've never had an issue. They've never not gone off. My Jimenez J 22s never had a light strike, but for me, be more of the feeding reliability, save for that follow-up shot. Yeah, AWAG. So, most of the time, um, it's just like if you were to put ammo in your carry gun. Say you have a 9mm Glock 19. Uh, you, If you're carrying that gun, you're going to put the best ammo that you possibly can put in that. So, you know, how much is your life worth? If you're going to put a box of Hornady <laughs> crit Critical Defense in there, you know, that's like, what, $30, $40 a box at 20 
You know, uh, and, no, 23, 23, 20, well, it depends okay. on your market. Depends on where you are. Okay. For us, it's $24 yeah. a box, typically for nine or the 380. Yeah. It's expensive. 26. So yeah. Yeah. with the, the little Caltech PMR 30 that I have, I have, you know, the spear gold dot, you know, nickel plated casings. It's, it, they have a specific standard that they have to abide by in the manufacturing process for self-defense rounds that when it comes to like the jacketed hollow points and any type of defensive round, they have to make sure that that will go bang every single time the striker hits it. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, and- it's kind of frivolous to, to say that rim. I know I can understand that, uh, you know, a couple years ago that rim fire was not a good self-defense round. However, modern manufacturing is always, always improving to the point that these people making these priming compounds for rim fire are the same people making the priming compounds for your center fire stuff. So it's literally the same thing, just a different application. I, I think a big part of it isn't necessarily the ammo. I think it's the reliability of a semi-automatic rim fire pistol, just the possibility of jamming. I mean, that's the one Although, like I said, our TX-22s have been basically rock solid. My aunt has one. She's fired tons of rounds through hers. Only had one jam with it so far since she bought it. She's also got an LCP-2 and 22 lr and that one runs great. But I've also had guns like the GSG Firefly, you know, that little mini SIG P226, that if you don't run CCI through it, it won't cycle properly. And it was having issues as it started to get dirty. So... I, my recommendation... Also, yeah, go uh, ahead. yeah, I was also going to say, yeah. you could also get... Uh, you know, your, your clothing caught in, in the action or the slide when you go to draw that gun and it'll malfunction. So it's, you know, it's always a possibility uh, too. Yeah. it's so there's always a possibility of jams. That's why you need to train in order to basically, if the gun jams, you immediately see that it jammed and fix the problem ASAP. Yeah. So when it comes to choosing a caliber, would you guys agree with me that Nine millimeter and three eighty can both be equally snappy, basically through the same platform. Like, say you shoot a firearm in three eighty, and then you go and shoot that firearm in nine millimeter. I'm thinking of like the easy three eighty versus the easy nine. Um, I know this guy's got the CPX two and three eighty, and the CPX two and nine millimeter. My my recommendation is you just go nine millimeter, just because there's really not much of a difference in weight, not so much necessarily in size. What do you guys think about that? Would you recommend just going nine instead of three eighty as a starter? Not- yeah. Uh, I, some people are a little recoil sensitive. There is a difference, but if you're not extremely recoil sensitive, yeah. Plus, to be honest with you, I'm cheap. Nine millimeters cheaper than 380. Yeah, usually. I don't know. Then the firearms that I fired, I, I guess it really kind of depends on the platform. I mean, there's a few times where the 3D feels just as snappy as a nine millimeter and it's just as hard. But then it also comes down to the trigger. Like the original Smith and Wesson bodyguard trigger was a little hard to pull. Um, your CPX two triggers are like 10 pounds. I mean, that can really have a huge effect on your accuracy. So if you mix that in there with a snappy round, it isn't necessarily going to be much better, but, uh, let's see what we got here. We've got some comments coming in. So wheel and well arm says I'm carrying a para ordinance P 12 LDA 45 ACP pre light alloy frame and holds 12 plus one. Nice. Nice. Joe V says I've had good luck with the shield, uh, sometimes with an LCP and sometimes G 19. But the shield's a good size for me. The 365 felt too small in the grip. Yeah, mine just fits my hands. I don't have very large hands, just medium-sized hands. And I can just get it to fit my hands well. Although that that second hand, uh, trying to get that purchase on it, I've had to kind of modify my grip from what I do with anything larger. So I can't quite get my a good, like, like the best two-handed grip I possibly could on that pistol. I shoot it well enough to shoot it good. Um, but it is not necessarily. So, I mean, I was thinking about going the XL. But the 365 XL really reminded me of my car CT9, which has which had a long single stack grip. It was like seven plus one or eight plus one, nine millimeter. Just hard to conceal, printed really bad. I mean, you could just notice it all the time because the grip was so long. And so for me, I just wanted to go something a little bit smaller. But uh, let's see here. Tailgate Tiger says, also, if I have a holster that's easier to throw on, I'm much more likely to carry daily. If the holster is a pain, I tend to forget it. I've had good luck with the Concealment Express inside the waistband holsters. Uh, let's see. Sandhill Shooter says, always remember the first rule in a gunfight. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Now, Sandhills also said my wife hated the 9mm easy. So maybe that uh, recoil spring just wasn't, it was too loose for function for people. You know, they kind of compromised the, the ease of charging in the firearm in place of having a decent amount of recoil absorption ability, I guess. That could be a possibility. 
Uh, Billy Cab Driver says, I did have to pull my gun once while on the job, but thankfully just presenting it with this was enough to deter the threat. Yeah, so having something is, is going to be the first thing. You need to get something to carry, especially if you can get a carry permit in the place where you live. Um, the one thing about the, the pistols, too, is when you're looking at these pistols, make sure that you look around and see what kind of holster availability is out there also. Uh, you know, generally you can get some sort of a universal holster that'll work with most firearms. Unfortunately, they tend to be like the, uh, the, uh, the, the padded nylon style, you know, I had somebody that left a comment on my, my video today. They bought a Stoger STR nine, which kind of looks a lot like an SD nine VE. And they were having a hard time finding, a, you know, the holster selection was pretty rare. They, they, they could get one from Klinger holsters and Kydex, or they could get an alien gear. And that was basically it. I mean, that's to me, that's good enough of options for a person. But it's not like you've got 20 companies out there and there's a lot of different price points to choose from. So the holsters can be a big issue, too, especially if you can't get one custom made or if the person making the holsters doesn't have a blue gun for it. So. Uh, so so oh, anyway, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say I'm one of those anomalies that I can conceal carry a full size handgun. Um, uh, you know, I'm pretty lanky. I'm six, six, one, six, two. And the driver's license says six, two, but people say I'm six, one. Well, whatever. It's yeah. <laughs> Six but, foot three. Um, so my main carry gun when I'm either uh, out in the woods or something um, is a Sig Sauer P226 and 357 Sig. I've had mm -hmm. this thing forever. I love shooting it. Um, and I can run a plus two mag extension, on it, which gives me 17 plus one of 357 Sig. And I can conceal carry that right, you know, appendix carry. And I just use a universal inside the waistband holster that's like the fabric type. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it, yeah, it yeah. doesn't print at all. I mean, maybe the magazine extension might like put like a, uh, you know, a little bump out. But if I'm if I'm out and about and I'm moving most of the time, you don't notice it. Yeah. No, that's that's a heck of a choice, man. And I love that round 357 SIG is definitely one of my personal favorites. Um, Kevin June says, has anybody tried the urban carry holster it conceals well differently than the other appendix oh, carry goodness. options? I've seen the urban no. carry of the Gen 1 and the Gen 2. I remember in the commercial, the dude pulls a 12 gauge out of his pants <laughs> with their, yeah. their massive urban carry holster. Um, so, I've never um, tried one before. I've seen them. They look like they're going to work. But uh, AWAG, what do you think, man? What's your, what's your take personally, on it? Personally, um, yeah. if you want a good laugh, just just look up a couple of videos. Uh, Urban carry fails. And some of them are absolutely comical. So they the pull goes, up on the flap and like the gun launches itself out of the pouch yep, or what? Yep. Okay. Because you know you might be you might be running on adrenaline. You reach for it, grab, pull on it, and it just. <laughs> yeah. If you pull if you pull too hard, it will launch your gun into the stratosphere or towards your attacker. But you can so, like John Wick it. You can pull on it and then grab it out of the air as it falls back in your hand. You know. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't. I, it, if I'm my kidding, hand's not on the gun, the yeah. gun is useless. Yeah, but but a wag like the footsteps of a Navy SEAL. That's right, the footsteps. Oh of goodness! A Navy SEAL. They always play that same music in the background of all those commercials. It's the same the same one they show for the drone commercial and the flashlight commercial. They got this like this like piano music playing in the background, <laughs> making you think you need that product. You know? Yeah, and that's just it. There's um, some wannabe that's spilling their bowl of popcorn at that moment, going, "That's for me." And it's like it was developed for elite strike forces, but never sold to the public until now. And then the engineer left the company and started Urban Carry. You know? You know um, I yeah. I was wondering about those because I seen those. Like, how loose would you have to hold your damn belt or have your belt set for that to pop out reliably too? I mean, we sit there yanking, you can't yeah. get it to go, man. I gotta. Yeah. I'd like to buy one. I wonder if I could pick one up on eBay for like five bucks or something at this point. I have. I, one I, I need lock to try leather. one. I have one of their lock leather holsters and. It's okay. Uh, it doesn't cover the trigger guard on the gun that I no. use it with. But other than that, yeah, but, I mean, they're made well. But they said that's perfectly safe. They said there's no problems with that. <laughs> yeah, okay. I know. So Somebody um, out in the audience, send Travis your urban carry holster. Just do it anonymously so he doesn't yep. shame you. Oh, I would never do that. I'm not going to. I would. I would. I, I'm not. No, because I mean, because people try these things thinking, I mean, the way they market it, it looks, it looks good. It looks like it's going to work. You know, you start, you know, all the big YouTubers said that they were amazing, right? All the big channels. Okay. You've got to get an urban carry. Say it's good. You definitely yeah, it's got to be it. good. The CPX2 is a wonderful pistol. We'll never have issues. So if you Travis. have yeah. an urban carry uh, holster, uh, here's my challenge to you. Uh, conceal carry your compact, your subcompact or compact firearm in that urban carry and then try drawing it while sitting down please i just, that's that's a challenge yeah 
that is the only thing that every commercial I see for the urban carry, it's always when the guy is standing, not when he's sitting. Well, there. and when they show it sitting, they show how concealed it is, but not him actually trying to reach for it. Because you're not going to get it because of that 90 degree bend. Maybe you don't Correct. remember geometry from high school. I know I certainly don't, but I know something doesn't go this way if it has to go this way. I don't know if that makes sense. But yeah, I mean, just the design of it looks like it's not going to work. So, I mean, I, again, I, I really need to try it before I totally knock it. But that's going to be one thing right there. If you're sitting and you need to draw, if you can't stand up or you can't le lean yourself back to pull your firearm out, you know, what are you mm -hmm. supposed to do, right? Yeah. And that's the thing here is, um, you know, now living in the South, now I see how, uh, how I mean, I thought living near Philadelphia was bad with rage, uh, road rage, but people down people down here they're, they're angry all the time and, <laughs> God, you know, whatever happened to human hospitality i thought you're yeah. in a nice part of the country where you know people kind of kind of live a little more laid back and just kind of enjoy life instead you've got you know screaming karens oh, going down the, the 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 95 south right in their in yeah. their suvs wanting to run you off the road well you're not going the, 80 in the 75 right yeah what a lot but, a lot of people don't realize about down south is when those little old ladies say well bless your heart that doesn't mean bless your heart a lot of the time. Because that's what they always tell me when I go down there. That that's yeah. F U. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, see, that's they didn't, southern, yeah that's they didn't tell me that. They don't yourself. teach us that in, in the public schools in Nebraska. <laughs> so but that that's another thing. From too, the city? Is <laughs> you you spend yep. a lot of your life if you if you commute to work, you're spending mm -hmm. a lot of your, your time inside of a vehicle. Do you have, you know if you're concealed carrying and you can't, you know, if you have your permit but you're not allowed to keep like a vehicle in your car or something mm -hmm. uh most of the time i just i keep my uh my handgun in my truck um yeah you know because i it, it's uncomfortable to um to actually like draw from sitting down mm -hmm. and most of the time if you're at like uh, a restaurant eating with your family and or most of the time you're either sitting down um you know, this is what I've seen is most of these times is you're rarely standing when somebody goes to attack you unless you're like pumping gas or something. But like, I mean, this is just what I've seen. This is my opinion. So like you got to yeah. train for both uh, situations. Yeah. No, I agree. And I mean, also, like like I said, when you consider that 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 carry weapon, unless it's an impulse purchase like your P365 was with me, uh, you know, make sure you've got a decent holster selection out there because you might buy something unusual or kind of odd and there might not be anything out there aside for maybe the plastic holster that might come with a gun. I'm thinking of some of the SAR pistols or even now the Canics. I mean, Canics, there's there's tons of holsters out there for those now, too. So um, so so to start off, and this was kind of my experience, the the first and only firearm I've actually ever paid to rent, believe it or not, was the P365 SAS. I wanted to try it because, you know, they're all over the place and there's some good deals on it because I don't think they're selling as hot as the regular P365. And so I wanted to try it. I was excited about it. I like that rear sight system. And then I tried it, felt exactly like a regular P365, but the sights were not what I thought they were. I didn't feel like I really had a good enough sight picture to comfortably use it, say, past like 10 yards. And I know that thing's not designed to be a long-range firearm. I get it. But even at like 15 yards, you know, the, the rear of the gun is covering up two-thirds of your target. It's like I would hope I would have a clear sight picture when I take that shot versus having a more traditional firearm with the normal three-dot sights and so on. And so with that particular pistol, I would recommend that whatever you want to whatever you want to buy, try to rent something in the same series or rent something that's similar to what you want to get, whether it's, you know, like, Maybe that like maybe if it's a different model, but it's the same form factor or the same caliber before you go buy it, definitely try to rent it first because then you'll figure out which qualities you like in a pistol first. Because if I had done that and really taken my time, I probably wouldn't have gone through eight different concealed carry firearms. I would have maybe settled for something that has a little bit of everything in the qualities that I want from a carry firearm. So like I said, I'm already on like number eight right now and I'm fine with the P365. There's nothing that that, you know, there's no reason for me to want to get rid of it at all. Although again, you know, kind of like defense that I'm really kind of liking, you know, the, uh, what is it? The, the P, what do you have? The P, not the P238. The P938. P938. I mean that, man, that's just a cool little gun too. You know, I mean, that's pretty sweet. You've got what, is it six or seven? It's, seven plus? Uh, there's two mags. There's one six plus one, one seven plus one. So run eight rounds and have a spare mag. I yeah, mean, it's, like, you know, the 365 has it on gun capacity, but 
I was looking at both just like you were, and I shoot the 938 way better than I do the 365. Well, I mean, in my opinion, the trigger's better. It's got a nice, it's got a very, it's very controllable. It's very comfortable. It's very well built. And I'm getting old, so I'm kind of liking the 1911 designs personally. Um, so I don't know if I'll actually go with another, another, um, uh, a concealed carry firearm or not. I might just stick with what I have right now and be happy with it. But I do recommend you go out and rent, or maybe if you got a friend, you can legally do it, borrow a firearm from somebody or meet a friend at the range and test out their pistol. Um, you know, or just, you know, if you find something that you shoot well, like Squib said, if you shoot it good, if it's going to be reliable, I mean, it's pretty hard to dispute an M9, you know, like a 92, bread 92 series. So, you know, it could be one of those things where you might have to hunt around a little bit before you find it, or you might just simply have to find something that's going to work that you're comfortable with that might have some compromises. It might be a little painful to shoot on a regular basis, or it might not give you the best grip overall. So, uh, let's see here. Sandhill Shooter says, get yourself a holster from the other, 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 other Travis, a TDM Tactical. Yeah, check out TDM Tactical on Facebook. They are a Nebraska-based small business making some really good American-made holsters sketchy roll says legally borrow lol i don't know the terminology man i'm still waking up i apologize uh let's see kevin jr says bless your heart equals you are an idiot uh let's see see if we're missing anything so i don't know i mean i mean the big thing is you know go out there and rent and test and see what you can do um calaveras you guys you want to give us any details at all on on what you guys are looking at doing for concealed carry are you able to get your carry permit in california it you know it really is a county by county there's a few of the counties that you know what? Uh, it's available. Mine being one of them. Um, other counties, it's it's an act of God to get one. Um, I have a. The first step of the process is actually a, an interview with our local sheriff. So that's for what in, in November of 2020 when I went to schedule it. As soon as I could get it was September of 2021. So it's going to be a while before I can do my interview. But uh, I don't know. That's for what I what I think in a firearm or whatever. It's whatever the heck works for you. I agree with you on the going out and renting, especially if you have minimal experience with handguns. That's what I did with my wife. It's because she had minimal handgun experience. So like, okay, I was talking to her. I want like I told her for a baseline, we're gonna go with nine millimeter because at least during non crazy periods it's easier to get and even right now it's one of the ones that hits the shelf more regularly it gets sold out fast but uh it hits the shelf more regularly than some of the oddballs uh um, yeah so that's where i you know that was just uh okay once she gets some uh experience she can if she decides she wants to go 380 37 sig 44 whatever the heck she wants once she understands her likes and dislikes she can go to whatever she wants. I just wanted that as a baseline for her. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's her. And we went out to the, uh, went to a few different places where we could rent, you know, handguns. And so they was like, okay, let's pick a selection of different kinds, different styles, some with hammers, some without, you know, what, uh, uh, some with the Glock style trigger safety, some with the thumb safety, mm -hmm. just trying to get her as much variety as she can. And as, she started shooting. I'm like, okay, what about this? Don't you like? What about this? Do you like? So we kind of start getting her to figure out what's you know what might work for, her. you know. And she ended up settling on the G19. So, okay, and great choice. I mean, you know, there you may go through. You might be like me. You might just you know go through pistols, go through something new every year, trying something different. I mean, maybe part of it is too is having a firearms channel. I like to test new equipment, and different firearms, and I'm always trying different things, but I'm sitting here thinking, I forgot I got, okay, pistol number nine would have been, I had a shield. I had one of the first shields that came out. Um, it was, it was safety model because I think that was the first one that they released. I couldn't get the non-safety model at the time. And, uh, you know, I had that for about six months and it was okay, but I wanted more capacity. So then I sold it and bought something else. So good question here. Here's something to think about Kevin June and maybe squib, maybe you can chime in on this. Cause you're, you know, you've done the full size carry before. What do you think about a concealed carrying a CZ Shadow 2? And what holster would you use? What do you guys think about that? CZ Shadow 2, any recommendations? We're talking full-size 9mm. Yeah. AY? That's a really nice gun. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, um, sweet. Yeah, yeah. The only thing about that, that CZ Shadow 2 is it's heavy. Um, you know, I I can't really complain that much about the weight because my... Uh, it weighs as much as my SIG 226. Yeah, loaded. it's not exactly light gun. Yeah. But um, 
the trigger is nice. Everything mm-hmm. about that gun is nice. Um, so uh, it's a very steep cost, but it's a very narrow gun too, which I like. Um, it would print a lot less. Uh, I would get something that's m- specifically made for that gun, uh, holster wise. Um, I want. I, I don't know if um, Lucas at T Rex Arms makes a uh, Kyde- inside the waistband Kydex holster for uh, CZ Shadows. I know they make them for the P P10 and the uh, PO9. Um, but um, oh, I don't. I don't really know what kind of holster you get. Honestly, I would either go with some sort of like fabric holster or a Kydex holster for. Uh, I wouldn't really go leather with uh, with the Shadow too. Mm, okay. But I mean, the fabric holster, if you're talking about something that's, is the Shadow 2 hammer fired or striker fired? I can't remember. It's hammer. Okay. So it's, do you, it's basically I mean, a CZ 75 that's really, really dumb. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Uh, man, that's a tough one. I know I, I would check me. I've been using them for years, Clinger holsters. I mean, I've been buying holsters from them for probably, well, I mean, I was, I, I first bought from them probably six or seven years ago and I purchased holsters from them and they've sent me holsters to test out. They've always been a great company. Their Kydex is nice, high quality. Um, the hardware is very well done. They've got great customer service. They've got different size belt clips you can get. That's another one too. If you need yourself a two inch belt clip or a 1.75 inch or 1.5 inch. Otherwise, you know, if you just go on eBay, the amazing thing is on eBay, there's a lot of small companies that I purchased from that are making holsters here in the USA, Kydex holsters. And they're very fair prices. We're talking, you know, under $20, right? Now, for something like the Shadow 2, you're going to be looking at something full size, might be looking at a higher cost where, say, Clinger might cost you $45, you know, to get one of their Stingray or Stingray 2 holsters. Um, But if you do look around, you can find, I mean, there's quite a few holsters available. Just eBay is one of the first places to check out. Also on, I can never pronounce it, Etsy, Etsy, Etsy. There's a lot of people that make uh, firearms, accessories, and holsters over there. Because the whole idea behind Etsy is people are selling homemade goods, essentially, or vintage goods. So there's a lot of leather workers over there. There's a lot of, of companies that produce different um, different items that you can go with. I actually found the the holster, a Kydex holster, inside the waistband, Kydex holster for my Makarov. And I've talked about this before. Um, it, it had leather lining in it, hard Kydex. I still have it. I'd show it to you if I could, but I don't want to show the firearm off on camera. And that actually came from the former Soviet Georgia, right? It came from the Eastern Europe area. It took about two months to get here, but it was one of the few companies that actually made an actual Kydex inside the waistband holster for the Makarov, uh, just because that's just kind of a fun pistol to play around with. And I actually enjoy it. It's, it's a nice gun. So I would mm-hmm. highly recommend if you're run, if you're going to run a full size handgun, mm-hmm. um, get a Kydex holster for inside the waistband, just for the simple fact that it's, a full size handgun is going to be much harder to draw while sitting down uh, from a fabric holster. And I've learned this kind of the hard way. Um, you know, I always like to, to essentially dry fire practice uh, from different, different scenarios, like sitting down. Uh, you know, if somebody comes up and pushes you down and you have to draw that gun while you're on the ground, you know, that's, that's another scenario that you have to, uh, you know, practice for, but Kydex holsters are, a lot easier to draw from, from unconventional positions. Well, they're giving you a constant amount of tension on that pistol because of the, the rigidity and the structure, you know, the shell holding the pistol in place. Um, now, Squib, Squib, you said that you had a fabric inside the waistband holster that you used for your M9? No, I used a leather one. I oh, tried, okay, okay. I tried Kydex at first. I didn't like it. Yeah. I also tried at, uh, what would that be, 3 o'clock? I didn't like that either. Uh, so I, I went to small of the back and I know there's people who say, look, okay. The way I, I can still carry what yeah. I can still carry, why I can still carry where, what I don't expect somebody else to do what I do. You do what yeah. you do. A wag yeah. keeps talking about drawing while you're setting down. That's something that I don't even train for. I, that's, I don't plan for. I can tell you the what, what I carry, the way I carry, I'm mm-hmm. probably not going to easily draw it while setting down, draw it while I'm in my vehicle, something like that. I'm not saying it's wrong to train like that. I'm not, there are compromises. Everybody has a trade-off. You get that small gun, maybe you lose capacity, maybe you don't have as big of a caliber, but it's light and it's easy to carry. You know, mm-hmm. bigger gun, it's harder to conceal. It, it weighs more, but like I was saying earlier, for me, that's something that, I'm going to shoot it not just comfortably, but I suppose uh, with more confidence, Mm -hmm. if that's even the right 
term to use. Oh, yeah. I yeah, guess yeah, what yeah. I mean is if I've got a little gun that's easy to conceal and I've got it here and I've got it there and I, and I can draw it and I can do all this other stuff, but I'm missing the target. What's the point of having it and what's what's the point of carrying it and everything else? However, just because that's what works for me doesn't necessarily mean that's going to work for you. There are lots of compromises when you conceal carry. The very first compromise is what does your state law allow? After that, everything else is personal preference. Mm -hmm. I didn't have an issue carrying a full size. Uh, the weight didn't bother me. The fact that I didn't have a special belt didn't bother me. The leather holster didn't put the wear on it that uh, I thought it would, but I also didn't carry it all day, every day. Uh, you know, the longest I ever carried it was like 18 hours straight driving from Michigan to Georgia. Uh, so it, it did what I needed it to do, mm -hmm. but I also wasn't this guy grabbing my gun every time I walked out the door. I, okay. I didn't conceal carry all the time everywhere I go. And I know there's people who, what? what? It, no. it wasn't a thing for, I, mm -hmm. maybe I didn't conceal carry the way a lot of people do. When I took my concealed carry class, we were really there to talk about the laws in the state of Michigan. We did cover some tactics and we did take the range because it's a requirement. But everybody in my class, we were all gun guys. We were, we, I'm two of the people in the class did Olympic class shooting for Pete's sakes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We were all, and we got a, we got a discount uh, because they didn't have to go through and go, this is a gun and this is how it worked. They didn't have to do any of that crap with us. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, uh, I wasn't there to have some guy in a tight T-shirt with a goatee and a shaved head tell me that if you don't do it his way, you're doing it wrong. So, you know, don't uh, talk about maybe, my dad maybe, like that. No, <laughs> maybe maybe that's why I don't I don't or didn't because I, I let the thing expire. I had a concealed yeah. carry permit for ten years to let it expire, but that's maybe why I didn't follow some of the conventional rules or the more standard rules for, but there's nothing wrong with practicing, setting down, practicing, drawing from your vehicle. There's nothing wrong with saying, I don't want to carry in the small, of the back because somebody might knock me down. There's, there's a lot of things I know people that put an airway in their pocket. Seriously, they put mm -hmm. an airway in there and they're good to go. Right. And because they know firearm safety and they've been shooting for decades and they're totally good with it. You know, they realize it's going to be snappy when they shoot it, but the adrenaline's pumping. They want something they can just throw in their pocket and go. So I think I think a lot of it really comes down to your state laws and personal preference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Defense Dad, you want to chime in? Yeah, so I was going to kind of reiterate some of what I was saying is – so, like, Awag, for example, he said that he carried – I think he said he carried his appendix, right? Correct. You got, so, for me, that's not feasible. Uh, if you guys have seen my videos, that's just not going to work. And I also don't like full Kydex uh, holsters because they're not comfortable for me. I prefer a hybrid. So, as far as the perfect way to do it, th th there's not. And if you have a good instructor in your CCW class, he's going to tell you that. Uh, but you're going to do some experimentation. There's a reason people end up with drawers or boxes full of holsters until you find what you like. Um, and as far as like the carrying different ways to carry it, personally, I carry at eight o'clock because that's the only place that's feasible for me. But I have to do a good belt. And the reason I won't carry a 1911 is I'm a big guy, and that's that's on me to lose weight. But in the meantime, as a big guy, you whether you're carrying a gun or not, you're all always readjusting your pants. And then you add a gun that weighs 30, 36 ounces and it just makes it worse. So you've got to, you've got to find what works best for you based on your situation, your body type. And for me too, type of holster, a lot of people give me crap about it because the most time when I carry, it's actually a, leather holster with a single clip and they give you crap about well because as soon as you pull to reholster you have to pull the holster out but you gotta think of your situation there are times that's either not feasible for me to carry all the time i can't carry at work so i have to um de disarm and rearm yeah. in the parking lot i mean you just gotta find what works for your situation and, and be damned if people tell you it's wrong unless they obviously know it's a safety issue but yeah. see, defense said you're explaining why you carry the way you carry. And somebody else out there might be in a similar situation, maybe one of the criteria, all the criteria, and they're going, hey, I didn't think of that. That's a good idea. 
or like AWAG's talking about different ways that he trains and somebody else might go in, yeah, I took the online class and got my concealed carry permit. I didn't actually do any training. Hey, you know, that's not a bad idea. There's all kinds of different things that people can glean out of other people's experiences or reasons and say, okay, I think I can integrate this. Yeah. And it's just, it took me a lot of experimentation. I, I have, I am that, I have a box of holsters that, that, some work, some don't. We all have a box of holsters. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, not, not, I got the thing. box in my get... closet that says holsters. I should have just got the damn thing out and shown up, show them all off today just to go through every freaking holster that I ever bought. I mean, at a minimum, I purchased 10, one for every uh, carry gun that I've owned in the last eight years. What, what you do with the, the box of holsters, this is just like Give your away? box of, Well, yeah. It, yeah. Or it's just like your box of AR-15 parts, okay? So you somebody gets a gun. They're not sure what holster yeah. they want, but you've got a holster to fit it. Try this. If you mm -hmm. like it, keep it. If you don't, I don't care what you re-gift it, throw it away, do whatever. But just, just fit your gun. Try this. Before you go buy four yeah. holsters at $100 each, give it a try. I've got yeah. a holster. I've got a holster for a single action army downstairs that somebody gave me because it's brand new. He's like, yep, bought it, didn't like it. Threw it in the box. Now it's yours. Then that's what you do. You just so Travis. I, one day I might be you bothering just, you for that because I've got my my traditions black powder pistol. I might actually want that. <laughs> want to buy it from you? <laughs> you could have it. You could have oh, it. I mean, I think yes. it's a Black Hawk nylon holster, yes. but still, it's just like I don't have a single so, action army yet. But that's that's what ends up happening. Same thing with AR fifteen parts. You end up with extra parts, and sometimes you can go back later and use them. But some you got a buddy that's like, man, I can't find this right now because there's a shortage. I'll send you one. You know what I mean? So there, hold on to those this, holsters. There's this movie Speaking. that came out about 10 years ago called The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, right? It was a famous text. It was a famous book series. It's about these girls that share a pair of pants between them over like 10 years and all the stuff that happens to them with these pants, right? My wife watched the movie. I just did through it, unfortunately. And uh, I, I'm thinking that now we have like the brotherhood of the traveling holster. Like we just pass the holster off to one another, you know, over the course of our lives and everything that happens around that holster. Now, so see, that's, I thought about yeah. doing, I thought about doing that with a couple of YouTubers. I know with a Lamat revolver, uh, <laughs> the brotherhood of the traveling, traveling revolver, <laughs> the yeah. traveling of the mat, you know? Yeah. Hey, what's up, AY? So, Go ahead. Um, yeah. Speaking of AR parts, if anybody has a buffer detent and detent spring, please let me know. I can't find them anywhere. Um, anyway, but I, um, think I have one actually. <laughs> yeah, I think I've got a dozen. <laughs> we'll send you one. Like, send uh, fifteen dollars off a of PSA to get one. Do, do you, you want know? regular steel or stainless steel? Uh, regular steel, please. See, look at this. Look at this. It's like a little parts uh, between us. Yeah. But uh, like like Squib was saying, saying everything has trade offs when carrying, and that's that's the thing is uh, the trade-off that i deal with is comfort and you know that's that's the big drawback of the way that i carry but i'll you know it's one of those things i'm gonna have to get over it because every time i bend over to pick something up you know i have to do the you know i basically have to do the isosceles uh you know karate stance in order to pick something up because the um uh, what is it the beaver tail from the 226 and the, the hammer jamming into my stomach you know but it's it's one of those things that every single system has a has a downside to it, regardless of what it is. So here here's one like Billy the cab driver, right? He goes, even though I'm right handed while on the job, I carry my firearm on my left side so it can't be seen or accessed by those in the cab, and I practice both right and left handed shooting tactics. So I mean, everybody's got to do what's going to work best for them, and then them also, you know, the big thing is to find a, a pistol that's actually going to going to fit that role that's going to work well for you. So things like Ambi might be something to take into consideration depending on how you have to carry. Uh, oh, <laughs> defense. I'm just looking at your comment right now. Okay. So, uh, looking over here on the YouTube side, we got to catch up with some comments real quick. Snake doctor 78 says, yeah, I bet you, I bet that you cried a lot during that movie. Didn't you? Yeah. I had one of those, like, like that movie, the notebook with Ryan Gosling. It just, it just gets me every time, man, or steel magnolias or, or beaches with Ben Miller. Back mountain. I, I, dude, that's another uh, classic. That's another great one. That man, I just can't quit you. Um, what else do we have here? Wait a minute. Did I just say that? Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. So Justin Grimm says, I'm tall and wouldn't think to carry a gun so far away from my hand. Uh, Ozzy Orsborn's checking in. He says, I'm late. I barked a little hard last night. Yeah, everybody's a little bit slow today. That's okay, buddy. There's a couple people I've mentioned a few things here. Uh, You're not the only snake. one, Ozzy. I stayed up filming a... Uh, Amber Ale review. Amber Jeez, Ale. I mean, look. Yeah, budget does the show four hours earlier, hoping you guys would get a good night's sleep and you just... 
burn the midnight oil making videos for your channel i tell you okay what, you are okay uh, yeah, way too dedicated you know yeah yeah it is well the problem is that you're used to being awake so therefore you couldn't go to sleep snake yeah. doctor 78 says i'm trying ankle carry for the first time today with the shield what do you guys think as with a backup shield? you you could if it's close to your calf i think you could make it work if you've got a nice like neoprene sleeve with a holster in it uh, I mean, your Smith and Wesson shield with the with the, uh, the 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 shorter magazine. I don't think it would be that. I mean, it, it, with the proper pair, with the right pair of pants, you would never know. If you had pants that were relaxed fit enough or baggy enough, I don't think anybody would ever notice. So, uh, let's see here. Sketchy roll says recommendation for a holster for a strike eighty lower and upper build Glock nineteen. See, now that's the other thing too. When you start to get into like, say a polymer 80 build, maybe try a polymer 80 holster. You might have luck with that because you're going to have to have a, spe a specific kind of, of of mold for that Kydex because of the trigger guard, which is a little more squared if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, that's another thing too, is if you decide to make your own, to build your own firearm, make sure you can in fact get a holster for it when you're done with it. Uh, Kevin Jr. says, I have an outside the waistband holster in carbon fiber and looking for an inside waistband holster for it. I think he's talking about the shadow too. Now, wheeled and well arm says contact makes a Kydex outside the waistband holster for a shadow two. So if you are a shadow two owner, that's an option for you. Um, Billy, the cab driver says a very good economical holster is a Sula holsters on eBay. I have several. Yeah. I bought from a lot of just small companies that are based out of Florida or Georgia, um, on eBay, there's a lot of, of, of holster companies out there that are just not big name holster companies, but they sell a ton of holsters on eBay because that's one of the first places people go to look for one because they don't want to spend a lot of money, right? Let's see here. So Defense said you said that you shoot the P938 equally as well with or without the pinky extension. It's more comfortable though. Yeah, definitely practice with your, your compact pistol. Like with my P365, I've got one with a pinky extension one without and yeah to me they're both just as comfortable but for somebody who's new to shooting you might have some issues if you don't have that leverage that the pinky extension is going to give you um defense said what would be your advice on that do you want to practice equally with both magazines do you just what do you do um i carry it with the pinky extension on but to be honest with you because it makes it easier to get a grip on it when i'm when i have to draw it from the holster because i can hook that pinky onto it um, and then I carry the spare and that's where I always carry, I don't carry like mag pouches. Like a lot of people do. I use that pocket watch pocket in my jeans because it's perfect for, for up, up to even a 15 round mag for me. Of course, my big guys, so that pocket might be a little deeper than for you guys, but, um, yeah. It just, it just works. Uh, but yeah, I, the only reason I carry the pinky extension is because it makes it easier, easier and quicker to pull it out of the holster. Oh yeah. Yeah. You kind of get the extra leverage you need to, to clear the, clear the holster and get it out. Um, snake doctor 78 says it's a DeSantis with a wool backing. So that's the, uh, the ankle holster that he's got for the uh, shield. Yeah. I mean, as long as it stays up and it doesn't like flop all over the place when you're walking, I think that's important. Can you run with it at all? If you had to run, say you needed to run to some place before you could draw it, is it going to move while you're walking? If it stays on, then more power to you. Keep using it, you know? So is he carrying it that way as a backup or is that as his main carry? I'm not sure. Uh, Snake Doctor, if you can chime in on that, give us a heads up and let us know. Is that, are you looking at it as a primary carry or as a backup? Because I would only do it as a backup because I think you're going to want to have access to your your firearm on your waist if you'd have to push somebody back or you you know to try to hunch over and pull something out, pull your pants leg up. While somebody's coming at you, I don't know if that's really going to be feasible, but yeah, it could I, also be the environment too that you're operating in. So I think of ankle carry the same way as I think of carrying a boot knife. It is a backup. You're it's something where if you're crouched down or you you are you do fall on your back, you're on, on the ground, something like that where you can get to it. You gotta think just setting, you can reach straight down and pull your your foot up to your hand and get to it. But uh, otherwise, yeah, standing, you're you're not really going to get to that thing well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, same reason you'd carry a knife down there. Uh, Plus, my thing is, you you were talking about running with it. Don't don't go jogging out in the street with that. Run in circles no. around your backyard yeah. like your dog would. <laughs> yeah, you do know? some sprints. Do some sprints uh, and see what happens to it. Yeah, yeah just run go up and down the stairs in your up house. Down the aisles at Walmart. <laughs> just yeah, flopping off know, into the. He's, he's out there jogging down the street for fitness, trying to test out this holster. Out it flies. Especially if you're wearing shorts, it might be a little awkward. 
and don't yeah. run while trying to pull your urban carry out. That might be you might hit yourself in the head or hit a passing car or something. I mean, it's hard telling what's going to happen. So, um, okay. So Snake Doctor says, yeah, it's the backup to my pocket carry diamond back 380. So, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Now Snake Doctor also tells us that he does cry at the end of a league of their own every time. And all I have to say, Snake Doctor, is uh, this used to be my playground. And if you don't stop talking about the movie, I might start singing Madonna. Hey, so, there's no yeah. crying in baseball. There's no, no crying in baseball. No, no. Just at the end of a Tom Hanks movie about baseball. That's that's the key. So um, Justin Grimm says, get a quality belt, especially if the gun is heavy. So, so Squib, the only thing that I that I that I disagree with you on is I, I prefer to have a belt that has some rigidity to it simply because in my experiences with it is it does. And I'm not talking about gearing up and carrying all kinds of tack crap. I'm just saying in general, I don't get that sag with the holster if I've got a nice rigid belt it bears the weight of that holster and that, and that firearm. Cause like defense said, I've got to get the leather belt really tight to get it to keep the pants up, but also keep the holster in place. So it doesn't sag. So, so for me, I mean, I don't use an expensive tactical belt. I'm using a little $18 nylon belt off of eBay that just happens to have good rigidity that does the job. You know, before that I've always just used Dickie's leather belts from Walmart and they're okay, but they start to wear out and they start to stretch over time. So with the belt thing, you know, Try it if you think it's worth because you can drop a lot of money. You can spend 60, 70, 80, 90 dollars on a belt anymore for concealed carry. Uh, if you don't like it, send it back and find out what the return policy is on those belts before you buy it. See if there's any kind of like a restocking fee or anything because you might spend 60 bucks on it, find it doesn't do anything more than just your cheap $15 Walmart belt does, you know. Well, see, I don't know. That's just it. I, I didn't. So, for one thing, I wasn't carrying all day, every day. Mm -hmm. the, and the other thing was, I, you know, I, even a good quality American made leather belt is $40. I wasn't going to spend a hundred dollars on a belt that I had no experience with. Now I made the, yeah, I made the Walmart Dickies belt work yeah, and, and, yeah. and the $40, uh, uh, you know, leather belt work and all that. However, I'm not opposed to trying one of these things, but I would, uh, yeah. And, and if some company wants to send me a free one so I can shill, I'll, yeah, go right ahead. <laughs> but the thing yeah. is, I'm going to daily wear this and maybe not always carry. I'm going to use this as my regular daily belt, and I'll do a review on it after I've worn it at work at the factory for a year, in addition to carrying with it or, or you know putting other things on it, putting my Manny pack on there or, or what have you. I'm not saying they don't work. I just don't yeah. have any experience with them, and it's just – I don't know. This is the one that, and I actually took this off a of Night Strikes recommendation uh, for this one, the Fairwind Tactical. I'm just trying this one. It's just got the nylon. The thing is, it's you know like a seatbelt material. It's very, very rigid this way. So when you put tension on it, it pulls, and it just doesn't flex when you've got your holster on it. And so this one's pretty cool. I like the belt buckle system. This actually doesn't bother me as much as I thought it would. This is pokes a little bit into the bottom side of my belly, but it's not too bad. Um, and it's got a lot of adjustability to it. It's easy to adjust once you put it on. This one's 18 bucks. I'm just trying it to see what I think about it. It's kind of nice because you can just click it on, put your holster in, say I'm just walking the dog and I've got some sweats on or some shorts and I'm still wearing like a coat or a jacket or it's like a poncho or parka or something. Um, this makes it easy to just quickly, uh, you know, just have a second belt sitting around that you can use for your carry weapon, especially if it's not how you carry when you're at work or during the day. So it's been good so far. We'll see how well the hardware holds up on. It's got rivets on the back of it. And again, I think I paid like 18 bucks for this one on Amazon. They were selling a two pack of these for $25, which is not a bad deal because my leather belts from Walmart usually cost me about 15 or 16 bucks a piece. So that's something to consider too. Um, Ozzy Warsborn says the Glock 42 is a great ankle gun, also great pocket carry in summer shorts. Yeah, I had a Glock 42. I carried one for about a year. Um, I really don't even know why I got rid of it. I think I just didn't want 380 because I felt like it was not powerful enough for what i wanted although i had nothing against it at the time i'm selling it and buying a nine but uh, that's a good one um two live moose says i have two track line belts one black and one brown those things are stout but pricey yeah when you start to get into accessories and holsters you can really start to to drop a lot of money um let's see oh you guys are talking about detent stuff okay All yeah, and right. that's another thing too mm -hmm. uh you know you may start off with a less expensive holster because you don't know, right? This is where the free holster comes in, mm -hmm. you know, to play. It's the Here. same difference. Here. You might make that thing work. You might like it. Or you might go, even if you wear it out, you might go, yeah. dude, this is a $20 holster. I'll buy five of them and I'm good for life. You know what I mean? $13.99 on Amazon. It's plastic. Okay. For my P365, this is my holster. They, this company also does a Kydex one for $17.99. But I bought this because I bought the gun on a whim. I wanted to start carrying it right away. 
I wanted to take it out and I could get this in one day off of Amazon, which is the only reason why I bought it. And uh, it's Gun and Flower brand, which is funny because my aunt, who's got an LCP2 and 22, they make a holster for that gun. I bought her the exact same holster and she loves it. You got the adjustable tension on it with your screw. You've got a up to 20 degree cant angle option. I mean, it's nothing too fancy. It's not even Kydex, but it does the job. I mean, it. I show it off in my, uh, in my, my I think my cleaning video or my range test or whatever. I do want to get a Kydex holster for it that might keep the gun a little more snug. But again, you just, I got it just to get myself into it. And then I'm going to investigate other options, maybe go back to Clinger or something like that. So I ordered um, holsters right after we got our concealed carry permits. I ordered holsters for, for me and my ex-wife and we tried some stuff and, you know, I was going off of recommendations mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. this is, you know, yeah, this is the latest, greatest, blah, blah, blah. Neither one of us liked it. She went to purse carry, which I know there are people that grumble over that, but hey, I'm a proponent. It's better than nothing, dude. You know? Yeah, well, that's just yeah, it. Absolutely. I, you know? I'm a proponent of it. And if yeah. you don't like it, I don't no. care. Grumble all you want. Yeah. And uh, I I asked one of the guys at work that had been carrying longer to me, and and he recommended a leather holster. I'm like, really? And yeah, yeah. You know, you don't need to have the space age stuff. So I went down to the gun store where I bought my M9 at. And I mean, this is a big gun store. They've got an indoor range. They, you know, they, they sell tons of guns and accessories. And I said, guys, I need a concealed carry holster. And, you know, what can we do? They let me try out holsters right there in the store with the gun unloaded, of course. Mm -hmm. But until I found something that worked and it was it was one hundred dollars for the holster. I think it was ninety five or one hundred dollars yeah, yeah. for this leather Galco holster. Mm -hmm. It's worth every penny. So if you go good, I mean, Galco yeah. makes really good stuff. I, you know, their, their holsters are real. I, mean, I think they're American made if I'm not mistaken. Um, I've, I've had a couple of their holsters in the past and they are great. If yeah, you've definitely. got a store that has a wide variety of holsters, especially if it's the one where you bought the gun at, it would behoove them to let you try them, uh, you know, and, and just instead of the guy just pushing the most expensive holster on there, but you, you might be pleasantly surprised if you get, mm -hmm. you know, an expensive holster, but, but, just just ask if they go no we don't do that here all right fine there's other gun stores hopefully see kevin june had mentioned that the uh what was it the core essentials carry belt is is he's interested in it but it's 80 bucks i mean yeah when it comes to belts man you can drop a uh, a pretty penny on those yeah Build i pay, the I pay 80 for my next belt but it's it's a good belt mm -hmm. but uh, the buckle's a little big for me but yeah yeah yeah, I mean, and so the big, you know, the big thing to address today is is the is, is the perfect carry gun out there for you. I think, in my opinion, the the perfect concealed carry firearm is going to be the firearm that you can make work best for you, that you shoot the best that it can, that conceals the best on you, that fits the type of operating environment that you have. So we can't make one just general recommendation. I mean, I could throw a bunch of different models out there, but even myself going through nine plus concealed carry guns in 10 years just for whatever reason, finding something else that appealed to me more and not always gaining more in the end after I bought it. If I, I would say find something you can shoot well, find something that's got options for concealability and practice with it and make it work for you. I don't know if they're, like we've mentioned earlier, five minutes into this episode, that the perfect concealed carry gun might not be out there. It might not give you the best grip. It might not be the most comfortable to shoot. Um, it might be a little bit heavy. So there's going to be some compromises when it comes to concealed carry. Just keep that in mind. And everybody makes something different work for you. Like what we had mentioned in the show today, we all have different models and different pistols that we carry. Some people carry full size. Some people carry, you know, micro compacts like me. So it really does just kind of depend on the person. So um, unfortunately, I do have to cut the episode a little bit short today. So we're going to go ahead and call it. Uh, we've got some shopping that we need to do today and we need to get going. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go, but we'll let the panel uh, give us their final plugs. We'll give a little shout out to the YouTube side and we'll call it an episode. So uh, Squib, let's start off with you since you were at the very end there. Uh, anything you want to say before we go? Uh, thanks for the invite. Interesting yeah. topic. Yeah. The coffee is working. Everybody yeah. have a good weekend. Right on, man. I'm finally awake, Squib. I'm finally awake. <laughs> oh, whatever, Travis. <laughs> we took two cups in three hours, but okay. Uh, yeah, man. Okay. AWAG, anything you want to say before we go? Um, thanks for the invite. As always, yep. it's been a long while. We've been here, uh, how many years now? Three? We're going into Three, four? season four in May. So that's going to be four years that we've been doing the show, which I know there's, there's podcasts that have been on for five years, seven years, eight years, but it's been well, a long time for us, man. Though, We're all man. getting old, man. We're all getting old. I was in my thirties when I started this show. <laughs> Dang. You too, AWAG. I mean, you could even drive back then when we started the program. Nah, so. it was just a baby. 
That's right. You're running on a learner's permit, just driving when yeah. you felt like it, right? Yep. No, nah, I'm just kidding. No, we don't have any minors on this show, unaccompanied minors <laughs> ever, ever on this broadcast. So, um, all right, man, I appreciate you being here and uh, hope everything goes well with the uh, with the pickup truck and uh, yep. and the carry permit and all that fun stuff. So cool. All right. Defense dad, you ready to start your weekend or what? You're probably pumped up, aren't you? Aren't you excited? I got to load up. I got a couple rifles and some handguns. My buddy and I are going to go shoot. And right on. Got, I think between the two of us, we got five scopes to, to zero in today. Well, if you got anything you need cleaned, I love to make videos on that kind of thing. So just give me a holler and let me know. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. <laughs> cool, man. Cool. All right. And Calaveras in the house. Calaveras, anything you want to say before we go? You know, I guess uh, we can let you go. I guess, you know, the once a month wagon train is finally found its way in Nebraska. Uh, <laughs> just want to say thank you for the end and, uh, you know, <clears throat> appreciate being here. Sounds good, man. Thanks a lot. And uh, let's see, G23 says coyotes, coyotes, coyotes. I don't know. I call them both. It kind of depends if I'm talking Looney Tunes or if I'm talking the animals. Uh, so let's see. Let's give a little shout out to the YouTube side again. Thanks to SS Pond for their support of the podcast. It's been great having you with us for all these years, and we'll continue that into the future. Uh, let's see. G23, thanks for watching. To Who You Bar and Girl, Ozzy Orsborn, uh, Agorizers out there, Justin Grimm, Kevin June, Billy the Cab Driver, Gun Metal Guy USA gives a thumbs up. Right back at you, brother. Uh, let's see. A lot of conversation going on. Two live moo. Ozzy Orsborn's out there. Snake Doctor 78. Justin Grimm. Uh, let's see. Make sure we didn't miss anybody. Midnight Range. TM's out there today, too. Blue Steel 44, always in the house. Wheeled and well armed out there. I think we had a little tacos and french fries, if I'm not mistaken. Defense Dad over there and over here. Kevin June. Daniel Rye was out there today, too. Hello, Daniel. Bernabe Sanchez watching, too. Buenos dias, hermano. Hola, compa. Hola. AWAG 1000, always in the house. And hopefully I didn't miss anybody. Let's see. Calaveras pulling double duty. So we're going to go and let you guys go. So this has been Caliber Corner, podcast number 180, season three. Uh, what makes a perfect concealed carry firearm? Well, if you don't know, go back and watch this episode. We'll try to make some recommendations, give you some solid advice so that you make some good choices. But in the meantime, guys, I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. We'll talk to everybody next Saturday. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye Alicia. Alicia. Bye-bye, Alicia. Bye-bye. Te amo, te amo.